Welcome back to the Gender Reveal Party. Today's actually a solemn day. I'm here with my guest, Aurora Higgs. Welcome back, Aurora. Hi, thanks Hi. for having me. Thank you, thanks for doing this with me. Today, if you don't know, is a Trans Day of Remembrance, TDOR in the trans community, and it's celebrated every year on November 20th. Aurora, do you wanna fill our audience in on what TDOR is? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those bittersweet um, observances. I, I hate to call it a celebration because really what it is is a memorial. 100%. Um, it is, you know, again, as you said, TDOR or TDOR stands for Trans Day of Remembrance. It is sort of um, the, the other side of the coin to um, Trans Day of Visibility. Um, and that Trans Day of Visibility really focuses on those of us who are um, contemporaries um, who are of trans experience. Whereas um, TDOR, Trans Day of Remembrance, really asks us to remember, celebrate, and sometimes mourn those who we've, who we've lost through um, direct or indirect transphobia in society. And direct transphobia can be violence um, enacted upon us. Um, and indirectly, it could be, you know, um, making our lives so hard that we can't even um, secure livelihoods. And we um, maybe, you know, um, lose our lives due to just insecurity of resources that uh, keep us healthy. And so there are a lot of reasons why um, our community is under um, it's under attack. I mean, again, it's it's not so simple to say that people are attacking our community, but it you also can't say that our community is not under some sort of attack. It it feels like there's an invisible pressure that is um, weighing on all of us as we um, leave the house, as we turn on our televisions, as we look through our phones and scroll through our feeds. Um, there is a lot out there, but there's also a lot of beauty. And um, Trans Day of Remembrance asks us to remember those of us who came before us, those of us who paved ways and um, blazed trails, and um, those of us who we want to remember and take with us into the future when we do begin to have a, a better and more um, you know, beautiful and tolerant in a world, but not just tolerance, but celebration of who we are. Right, yeah. And um, officially, Trans Day of Remembrance, TDOR, was uh, started in 1999. I um, remember because I was in Washington, D.C. When it started, and it started in Washington, D.C., and it was started by a transgender advocate by the name of Gwendolyn Ann Smith. Mm -hmm. And it started as a vigil, <laughs> and in the vigil uh, was in, to honor the memory of Rita Hester. And Rita was a trans woman who was killed in 1998. And the vigil commemorated all trans people who lost their lives to violence. And so we uh, have continued that. That tradition of TDOR has continued throughout since 1998. And <clears throat> um, every year, we one of the things that we do is we say their names. And so uh, we are going, I'm going to light a candle. We're going to do this like a the memorial that happens every year on um, TDOR, and Aurora and I are going to take turns reading their names. We have 45 this year, so it's important to note that every year since uh, 1998 that I can remember, HRC has been documenting this event, and every year the numbers get higher, mm -hmm. and um, as we read these names, I think it's important, uh, Aurora and I, I think we're on the same page with this, that we're going to also um, list the race of these people because um, out of these 45 people there's only about four that I can see that so far we'll see that are white um, yeah. every other person is a black person a Latinx person is someone of color and um, this you know we know HRC says that a trans woman is four times more likely to be murdered or die by violence than a cisgender woman and so all, almost all of these are also trans women. And so, um, you know, and one of the reasons that I wanted, that I always think you're so brave, Aurora, is that like being a black, out black trans woman is, uh, is not easy, right? And you, there's a target. <laughs> it feels like there's a target on your back. Yeah. And um, so that level of hypervigilance that you have to live with is what I want people to get. It's like, it's dangerous right? It's dangerous mm -hmm. to be trans in the world, and it's super dangerous to be a Black trans woman, and there's a level of hypervigilance that goes along with being a trans person. 
I always cry at these things. Sorry. No, it's um, okay. It's a sad day. <laughs> so, uh, and without further ado, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time, but I think it's important. I'm going to light a candle. Yeah. There we go. And while you do that, it's also really important to note that <clears throat> HRC has been doing a really good job of keeping comprehensive uh, track and including race because we know that that's important. It's a huge um, um, influence on the rates of violence, but it's also important to remember that HRC has really only been able to track these numbers since about 2013. Um, we've ha been having TDOR since 98, but I mean, it's been really difficult to um, get an, an actual number of who all has, you know, who we've lost. And that number's really only been tracked um, successfully, unsuccessfully since 2013. So it's important to know that since 2013, this year included, that yes, these are the names we have, but we know that there are more out there because when we, um, when we do lose our lives, oftentimes um, there are cover-ups and uh, our dead names are used and we're misgendered in, in society. Um, and so just know that um, whatever number you see out there on the data of um, trans violence and murder, always, always, always know that it's actually more than what's being reported because we can't possibly wrap our arms around every single instance of this uh, type of violence. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just something important to know that our data will always be an underestimation. And I would say a huge underestimation because yeah. you have, I mean, people in small towns everywhere, for example, who yeah. just mm -hmm. die and they're not reported as trans, they're not reported as non-binary, they're not reported, you know, these are, these are the ones we know about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so these people were out in some way that somebody that we knew that they identified as, um, trans non-binary or somewhere in that world so yeah okay would you like to start sure all right first we have tiana alexander um a 28 year old black trans woman samuel edmund damien valentine valentine a transgender man from puerto rico Bianca Muffin Banks, a Black transgender woman in Atlanta, Georgia. Dominique Jackson, a Black trans woman. 50 Bands, a 21-year-old Black trans woman in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Alexis Braxton, 45-year-old Black trans woman. China Carrillo, um, a... Uh, I don't know that they have um, uh, China's race listed on here. Um, we can guess Black and or Latinx. Um, and the age was 25. Siblings, Jeffrey II Bright, a 16-year-old trans boy, and Jasmine Kennedy, a 22-year-old non-binary person from Pennsylvania. Jenna Franks, a 34-year-old white transgender woman in Jacksonville, uh, North Carolina. Diamond Kyrie Sanders, a 23-year-old black trans woman from Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio. Rayana Pardo, a 26-year-old Latina trans woman um, in Los Angeles, California. Jada Peterson, a 29-year-old black trans woman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Dominique Lucius, a 26-year-old Black transgender woman um, in Springfield, Missouri. Remy Fennell, a Black trans woman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Tiara Banks, a 24-year-old Black transgender woman uh, in Chicago, Illinois. Natalia Smut, a 24-year-old Black and Puerto Rican transgender woman in Milpitas, California. Edie Santos, a 22-year-old Latinx transgender woman in Houston, Texas. Tiffany Thomas, a 38-year-old Black trans woman in Dallas, Texas. Carrie Washington, a 49-year-old Black transgender woman in Clearwater, Florida. Dahara Dalto, 42-year-old transgender woman. Boston, Massachusetts. 
Whispering Wind Bear Spirit, a 41-year-old Indigenous non-binary person in York, Pennsylvania. Sophie Vasquez, a 36-year-old Latina transgender woman. Danica Danny Henson, um, who also went by Prince Daniel and Nia Dadon on and a 31-year-old Black transgender woman in Baltimore, Maryland. Serenity Hollis, a 24-year-old Black transgender woman in Albany, Georgia. Oliver Ollie Taylor, <clears throat> a 17-year-old white trans boy um, in Gervais, Oregon. Thomas Harden, a 35-year-old Black transgender woman in York, South Carolina. Poe Black also went by Oliver Jackson and Legion, a 21-year-old transgender man in Nyland, California. L. Boykin, who also went by Nova Watson in Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, just for clarification, I think that might be E.J. Boykin. Oh, sorry. No worries, no worries. I can't see E.J. yet. E.J. Boykin, I'll make sure we say it right. Yeah. Um, Adeline, <clears throat> sorry, Adeline Evans, a 24-year-old Black transgender woman in uh, Port Arthur, Texas. Taya Ashton, a 20-year-old Black trans woman in Prince George's County, Maryland. Shea Vanderpump, a 23-year-old Black trans woman in Trenton, New Jersey. Tara Marie Louise, a 36-year-old Black trans woman in Cleveland, Ohio. Miss Coco, a 44-year-old trans woman of color in Dallas, Texas. Pooh Johnson. 25 year old black trans woman in Shreveport, Louisiana. Desaya Monet, a 32 year old black transgender woman in Chicago, Illinois. Brianna Hamilton, 25 year old black trans woman in Chicago, Illinois. Kiera Laprie Cartier, a 21 year old black transgender woman in Arlington, Texas. Mel Groves, a 25 year old black trans man in Jackson, Mississippi. Royal Poetical Stars, a 26-year-old Black trans woman in Miami Gardens, Florida. Zoella Zoe Rose Martinez, a 20-year-old Latina trans woman in Maple Valley, Washington. Joe Acker, a white 26-year-old transgender woman in Boise, Idaho. Jesse Hart, a white 42-year-old trans woman in Banks, Oregon. Ricky Otomoro, AKA True Starlet, a 39-year-old Latina transgender woman in Centralia, Washington. Marquisha Lawrence, a 28-year-old black trans woman in South Carolina. Doesn't say what state. And I think that might be it for now. For now. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately. And yeah. again, many more names that we'll, we don't know yet and that we may never know um, who also deserve to be, whose names and whose uh, spirit and memory deserve to be elevated on this day and every other. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me, Aurora, um, on this uh, Trans Day of Remembrance. We really hope that next year the numbers go down instead of continuing to go up. <laughs> and um, we're going to do everything we can at the Gender Reveal Party to keep revealing gender powerfully to people and telling stories so that in a hope, just a hope, <laughs> we can uh, reach your hearts a little bit and uh, maybe reduce the level of violence and the level of hypervigilance that we as transgender people experience on a daily basis. So thank you for your time and attention. Anything else you'd like to share, Roy? Yeah, I would just like to say um, to all of my um, trans family and uh, brothers, sisters, and siblings out there, aunties, uncles, cousins, um, that I know that it feels like we are under the undue burden of um, safety, of maintaining safety and enduring violence. And I want you to know that 
yes, that is a large part of our lives, but it is not the entirety of our lives, nor is it the um, entirety of our story. Um, many transgender women, um, as you can tell from the names and the ages, um, are taken from us before their 36th birthday. Um, and, and, you know, it happens a lot more in the South. Um, and so there is there are ways in which we can investigate and ask ourselves and our representatives to look at where and why uh, transphobic violence is happening um, most frequently and do something about it. Direct action does work. I've seen it in my life. I've been a part of it. And I just want you to know that we can't do anything until we combine forces and coalesce as a community and, um, and coalesce with communities outside of our own to make sure that Black trans women, trans people, people of color are all uh, recognized and validated and no longer have to lose their lives to senseless violence. I'm here, if you, uh, Jay is here, we are both trans people who are relatively privileged um, because we get to do things like this and that we don't necessarily have to be as vigilant as maybe some of our um, other family members in uh, dire straits, but please know that we're here and we're thinking of you and we're ready to bond with you um, and be resources and whatever we can do. Um, that is what that is what this is for. It is not just to make us feel bad and to, for us to just dwell in pain. It is for us to remember what we have at stake and to fight that much harder to make sure that we don't lose any more lives. Yeah, and uh, and to keep educating so that the as the younger generation comes up, they they get it a lot more. And I mean, I just think year after year, while the numbers continue to rise still, I do think that the hope also continues to rise. And I want to, yeah. and I agree that we need to focus on that. So thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, you know, just to echo what Aurora said, we are here and we're, we are not just the two of us, but we are two people who are connected to a lot of other people who are out and here out yeah. and allies and all the i mean between the two of us <laughs> we basically know everybody so <laughs> we've got both coasts pretty much covered we do we have it, we got it all covered i got the midwest covered <laughs> we got everybody we know everybody so uh yeah if there's anything that any that that we can do or that we can connect you to to get you served um please reach out and you can find me um if you do want to contact me my website is www.aurorahakes.com please reach out. I would love to meet my family um, across the nation and across the world. Yeah, same. And we're always here at the gender reveal party. So hit us up. Blessings to all of you.